Now we'll insert this image into the document. This will be a new tag to use, the image tag coupled with the source attribute. It goes like this, left angle bracket, the tag for image, which is IMG. Then we add a space to indicate an attribute coming up. The attribute we want is source. Source will indicate the image file and a path if necessary. For source, we enter SRC. This is followed by an equal sign, then the name of the image within quotes. We'd also add the path if we don't have the image saved within the main folder for our web page files. Keep in mind that it's best to have the files in the same directory as the HTML source file. The name of our file is transparentsnowman.gif. Then we finish with the right angle bracket. A closing tag is not necessary when inserting an image onto a page. Let's see how this looks in our browser. We'll open a new browser window. Now from the File menu, select the Open command. For our own ease, we'll click the Browse button. Now select the Sample Files folder. Then double-click on the Transparent page. Finally, click on OK. This opens the page. Notice that we have a blue background with an image of the snowman. We can see how transparency works now. It makes the background for the snowman the same color as the page background. An interlaced GIF is saved so that the browser can load a low resolution image on the first of four passes, then fill in to normal resolution with subsequent passes. We can compress our images using interlacing in most graphics programs. JPEG stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. As you're probably assuming, it was named after the group who invented it. All JPEG images are saved with the extension of .jpg or .jpeg in the case of Mac. The image you see here is a JPEG image. JPEG images are realistic. They are usually pictures of real things, and each pixel in the image will be a different color. Therefore, JPEG images are great for storing photos. The JPEG format supports all colors, some 16.7 million of them. Most web browsers support them, but not every single browser out there will. They are considered a cross-platform image format. Just a short interruption here. Although it's possible to use an image that is saved somewhere other than the directory where our HTML document is stored, there are more disadvantages to doing this than advantages, mainly because we have control over what's in our main HTML directory, but we don't carry the same control over other websites or other directories. It's just better to be safe than sorry. Let's insert an image of a basket under the first heading of this page. Our first step is to decide where to insert the image. Let's place it between the first heading, the gift basket shop, and the second heading, Gift Baskets for All Occasions. Place the cursor between these two. Now it's time for our image tag, IMG. We enter it with the attribute SRC for source anytime we want to insert an image. Enter a left angle bracket, the image tag, IMG, a space to indicate an attribute, then the source attribute, SRC. We follow the source attribute with the actual file name including its extension within quotes. 
Remember, it's best to keep this file in the same folder as our HTML source file. However, if the file isn't in the same folder, we should add the path to it. Let's continue entering the tag to insert this image. With our cursor after the first quotation mark, we'll enter the name of the image. It's basket.jpg. Now finish the tag with a closing quote, then the right angle bracket. That's all we need. The image tag does not require a corresponding end tag, so we'll save ourselves some time and not enter it. So let's see how it looks. We'll save our work, then maximize the browser window. Once we refresh the window, we'll see the basket near the top of the page. Pretty easy, isn't it?